Last week, the federal government set up an interim management committee to run the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC. The Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Senator Segato Lukpapio, inaugurated the committee last week, Tuesday, in Abuja. The mandate of the committee is to help create an enabling environment for the forensic audit of the NDDC, which was announced by the president. Well, since the inauguration of the steering committee, there have been series of controversies over the structure and the plan probe. The statement by the president of Senate yesterday perhaps raised a major issue on the situation over the leadership of the NDDC, but we get some perspectives on the matter. I'm now being joined in the studio here in Lagos by Chief Joseph Ever, a Niger Delta activist. I'd like to welcome you to the program. Thank you very much. Also, Honorable Claytus Obon, a former lawmaker and chieftain of the APC, joins us from Abuja Studios. Welcome to the program. Abuja Studios, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. And we also have uh, Anya Quinn Sirimovo, human rights lawyer and chairman, Civil Society Coalition. I believe he's joining us via Skype. We'd like to welcome you to Lunchtime Politics. Thank you very much. Let's start with you, Mr. Ansirimovo. Should the new NDDC board immediately take over the affairs of the commission? I mean, as a lawyer, because according to the president of Senate, uh, the law setting up the NDDC does not recognize any interim arrangement once a board is in place. Very clear. There's no ambiguity in it. Um, what they had was an interim arrangement and as soon as the Senate has finished their confirmation, those who are picked, confirmed, to take over. That is the right thing to do. Let's ask you here, um, the RYC Joe Youth Council, and that's Mr. Ever, um, called the interim committee illegal, unconstitutional. I mean, one, one is asking, was there any need to have an interim committee in the first place? And, and then should this new board take charge of the audit? Yes, in line with what IYC has said, um, there is no need for any interim uh, committee. But now that the Senate has come to the rescue of the people of Niger Delta, in the first place, I want to thank Almighty God, thank the media, and thank the Senate, and especially the National Assembly, for this confirmation. Because uh, this country, anything that affects the Niger Delta will affect the whole nation. And so the National Assembly, yesterday's decision to confirm the new board, the whole Niger Delta, you see the jubilation all over. People are calling each other, thanking God that this crisis would have prolonged anything coming into the Niger Delta throughout the time of our uh, president. But now, with this, we expect them to go to Port Harcourt now and resume office and let the auditors or the uh, pro panel go on. We thank Buari, President Buari, when he came up with this pro panel. But this confusion that came again, we said, what is all this? And now the National Assembly has come to our rescue. Let, let's find out from Honorable Obun. I mean, do you see a problem brewing between members of the new board taking over the forensic audits and not the interim steering committee headed by Dr. Nunez? Well, let me make this point very clear. The people of the Niger Delta must be worried about the attitude that is being adopted. The intention and the purpose of setting up this committee must not be lost on the altar of the benefits that will accrue from establishing a board or no board. If the aim is to say what the governors of the Niger Delta and the Niger Delta uh, stakeholders have spoken to the president that warranted him in the first place to establish the, the, to insist on the establishment of an audit committee, then you should understand that the aim is to unearth why the impact of NDDC is not being felt in the Niger Delta region. So the issue of the interim board should not be misconstrued to mean that there was an attempt to abridge or subvert the act that established the NDDC. Don't forget that at the point of establishing that board, that committee, there was no board, and therefore it became expedient that the vacuum was dangerous. Now, to ameliorate this situation, especially against the proponents of board and committee, what should happen now is that even that board can establish a committee to oversee and supervise the audit. 
What I should be interested in is, for example, if you are going to establish an audit, uh, you are going to establish those auditors, the people supervising them should also be professionals in different areas that can make that job easy. So I do not see any conflict. Indeed, I come from the university, the academic community. What you call the visitation panel is the equivalent of what you get as the supervising body of the auditors. That board, the present substantive board as established by under the act, can indeed on its own some constitute a supervising body over the forensic audit in such a way that that report comes to them for determination, appropriation, and of course, don't forget that the NDDC is under the presidency, not under any minister or the SGF. It's under the presidency, under the act. I Therefore, must, I must I quickly... That what is happening to the quickly. two into the two bodies should be rather a synergy rather than divert attention to about who is to supervise. What right. would be the result? I, I must quickly bring in Mr. Anthony Mova, a human rights lawyer here. and chairman, Civil Society Coalition. I mean, the Senate in confirming also cleared uh, 15 nominees, rejecting one, and, and that is someone who represents River State, Dr. Joy Nunez. Um, what, what do you think would happen uh, to the nominee status? And I would also like to hear uh, your thoughts on the forensic audit um, of the NDDC. I think the critical subject matter is the forensic audit. Um, maybe the Senate will give an opportunity for River State to present another uh, candidate to represent it at the NDDC board. Um, but the financial audit is a critical matter, and that is what Mr. President has told you. And let me, let me also make the point. The manner in which this committee was picked when there was an ex existing um, management committee in the board. He's very, very suspicious and he needs to be investigated. But we have a situation where over the years, resources have been pumped in and there is no evidence on ground for the people of the Niger Delta that that money is being effectively used. We have had deficit leadership and all that. And that needs to be investigated. But the critical matter, again, is that those who are fast, who are quick in putting up a new, their own uh, entry management, cannot, are not the right people to organize or even supervise this audit. We need an independent audit. Because most of the people who are crumbling all over the place are people who will be in place to answer questions. We are talking so about accountability here. Mr. Simovo, are you saying and, you don't uh, even trust this new board in handling the affairs of the forensic audit? This, the, the, this particular entering committee is not as far as we do respect are not fit and proper people to put that place in, to put that uh, audit in place. We need the board to come in. That is what the uh, um, NDDC Act recognizes. They recognize board. Interim is a, 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 an interim arrangement. We need people to come in and give a roadmap, give a terms of reference for the audit. Okay. Okay. Let me quickly come back to our guest here in Lagos, uh, Mr. Eva. Dr. Cairo Jubo, a member of the Interim Steering Committee, fingered a member of Senate whom he accused of handling over 300 NDDC contracts. I mean, you heard that in the news. Yes. What did you think? Did he mention the name? No, he didn't. He should have mentioned the name as honorable member, former or whatever politician. All these ones he was just doing in order to show the world that they are working. We are working, and this is what we want to find out. We expected him to be courageous enough to mention you, the senator, you are this and that. So these interim people, I believe by today, they should be packing their load and leaving that place because, you see, Niger Delta, you see, people respect the Niger Delta. We have, in this country, Nigeria, that is why some of us produce the Niger Delta Hall of Fame. If we have great people, first inspector general police of Nigeria came from Niger Delta.
First professor of mathematics, Professor Lele Williams, come from Ninja Delta. First professor of English in this country, Professor J.P. Clark, come from Ninja Delta. Then these people now want to turn us to be as if uh, the Ninja Delta is like Banana Republic. We want the new board to resume office, and we thank the Na National Assembly for giving us this honor. This is not the first time the National Assembly has saved Nigeria. The first time was third, third time agenda, third time uh, agenda of a former president. They kill it. Then, how to make acting president Jonathan when uh, our late president was sick, they, they, it was them that also come up with a uh, uh, um, uh, doctrine of necessity. Now, they have also stepped into this matter. I want them to move fast. Because those people who want to cause confusion in the Niger Delta to paint us as people who are fighting ourselves, because of that, we don't need development. That is what we want to stop. All right, let's go to Mr. Honorable Obun uh, in Abuja. I mean, when you heard that coming from uh, Dr. Uh, Cairo Jubo on that particular matter, he did question the oversight functions of the uh, lawmakers on the NDDC. Come again. The, the allegations or the comments of Dr. Cairo Jubo on the senator who is alleged to have over 300 uh, contracts with the NDDC. I mean, when you heard that, some people have questioned okay. uh, the role of lawmakers, you know, and their oversight functions on the commission in the past. Well, let me make this point very clear, and that is why we should not divert attention and dilute the content of this forensic audit as the president has nicely done for us in the Niger Delta. One of the misconceptions that will bring crisis in the Niger Delta is to continuously find the Niger Delta people being limited as if to say that the Ijo is equal to Niger Delta. One of those facts must be cleared, and that is the impression that is created all over the place. I remember under the South-South People's Assembly, this matter came up between the late Chief M. Timbu and our father, Chief E.K. Clark over the dominance of certain minority tribes within the Niger Delta, believing that that is it. Now, on to the issue of the allegations. They are very germane. I come from a community in Bukiluku government in Cross River State. We have about three projects, which I am very certain monies have been collected for, paid up front, and the projects have been abandoned since 2011 till today. That, those are the kind of things people are afraid of and diverting attention about who should supervise. Honorable Nobody Auburn, we're, we're running out of time, but that. we've gotten your point on that. I must quickly get the point of view of uh, Mr. Nsirimovo, and that is your 30 seconds on this and what you expect to happen. And when you hear comments coming from uh, the interim committee, what do you expect? Um, I expect consequences to happen at the end of the audit. I expect clarity. I expect the institution of uh, NDDC to be effectively built. It's very, very weak. I expect those who mount the affairs of NDDC to become people who are responsive to ordinary people in the Niger Delta. Um, whatever is going to happen now is going to be participatory. It's going to be bottom up. And right. um, I also expect that. Um, the leadership of NDDC must check itself. And We'd like to thank you. We, we wish we really had more time on all of these issues, but thank you, uh, Chief Joseph Ever, and of course, Honorable Claytus Obun, and you, and Siri, and Yankwe, and Siri Mavu. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on the program.